Today, the whole Vaishnav world, the world of Krishna's devotees, is grieving. A very dear teacher, friend, example, spiritual master, has passed away in the holy land of Vrindavan. I still remember how it was when my own spiritual master left in 1977 this planet. We knew he would pass away. He had said many times that uh, I am an old man now. Uh, I will go in a few days. We knew it was his desire. We were prepared. But when the news came to Germany, it was as if a lightning had uh, crashed into a tree on the field. We were thunderstruck. I remember we all came together uh, near to the chairman. Someone lit a fire. Then we started to sing. And in that kirtan, no eye remained dry. Afterwards, we didn't really have many words. We tried to speak, discuss some memories. But there was a cloud of sadness uh, looming over us. The next day were the most difficult days in my life. I made long, long walks to be alone and digest everything. Uh, I went through the rooms of where I stayed. But wherever I went, I only saw the image of my spiritual master before me and then suddenly disappearing, disappearing never to return. I thought at that time my spiritual life had hit a brick wall. There was no progress, no uh, moving forward from this point because I had felt like a little fish in the ocean, fearless and uh, not worried because I felt my mother, the big fish, <laughs> was with me all the time and guided me, nourished me, showed me where to go and where not to go. Now this guiding presence of my spiritual master had left me and all of a sudden I was no longer fearless and confident. I remember at that time I took solace in a mm, description of what to do when the spiritual master leaves the world. It is in the Bhagavatam mm, and it, uh, it tells us through an analogy uh, what to do. Mm. There is Vaidarbi uh, who represents the disciple. She has gone with her husband into the forest after uh, taking care of a family uh, and fulfilling all those responsibilities towards the children. And now the couple lives in the forest preparing uh, eventually for their passage. They are very, very strict in spiritual life. The days are beautiful and uh, uh, they feel uh, great, great bhakti in their hearts. But then one morning, Vaidabi comes to greet her husband. And she sees the husband is sitting there, or better, the body is sitting there like every morning, but he has gone. She touches her, his feet and sees, oh, they are very 
very, very cold. He has gone, really, not just in a meditative way. He has gone forever. Oh, and she starts to cry. So this uh, uh, incident is uh, mm, uh, described in this ancient uh, Bhagavatam text. Being now alone in that forest, Vaidabi began to lament, incessantly shedding tears, crying very loudly. And my spiritual master uh, talks about this. Figuratively, the queen is supposed to be the disciple mm, of the king Mala Dvacha, that's her husband. No? Thus, when the mortal body of the spiritual master expires, his disciples should cry exactly as the queen cries when the king le left his body. Uh, I had done this. I had filled the rivers and lakes of Germany with my tears. But that's not how you can exist and go on with life. So my spiritual master continues by offering a solution what to do. However, the disciple and the spiritual master, he writes, are never separated because the spiritual master always keeps company with the disciple as long as the disciple follows strictly the instructions of the spiritual master. This is called the association by Vani, words. Physical presence is called Vapu. As long as the spiritual master is physically present, the disciple should serve him. And when the spiritual master is no longer physically existing, the disciple should serve the instructions of the spiritual master. There's a place in the heart where we can associate with our spiritual teacher. And we can get there by reading or hearing what he was all about. We can hear his instructions, his guidance. And when we follow that, we will meet him. We will meet him very, very closely again. And he will be there with us in the heart to provide the same guidance. I wish all of those who grieve, both those in the Vaishnava world and those are, who are not uh, uh, practicing devotees of Krishna, but who have uh, gotten the benefit of following a wise teacher. I wish all of you to come from grief to meeting your spiritual teacher or master in the core of your heart by associating with him there through his instructions.